So here's the thing we're working with. We're working this, with this idea. Let me repeat it. Any substance that can cause a particular set of symptoms is capable of curing those same symptoms in a sick person. Okay, is that all clear to everybody? Any substance that can cause a particular set of symptoms is capable of curing those same symptoms in a sick person. This is a deep hikma. There's a wisdom in this. And the wisdom is based, based one, of the, one of the foundations for this wisdom is based on recognizing that the body is this extraordinary thing, system that manages balance and homeostasis. So, meaning that the body, when it takes coffee, and this is, now there's another principle I want to bring in here. Our pharmacist is not here anymore. But there's, in pharmacy, they used to teach it, and I'm not sure they still do teach it because now they're so disconnected from <laughs> these kind of principles. But they used to teach in pharmacy that there was a law, that, and they, I forgot the name of the person that described it, but it takes on the person's name, and that is the inverse action of a, of a drug, of drug action. And that is, there's a primary action of a drug and a secondary action. And the primary action and the secondary action, the secondary action of a drug, inclines to be the inverse of the primary action because the body reacts and responds to it, similar to the, uh, even related somewhat to what you described with the ascorbic acid rebound, right? So are you with me? The primary action, the secondary action. So coffee, tea, any stimulant. You start drinking coffee every day and boom, you get wired, right? Heartbeat, bump, 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 sweat, ba 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 speech, et cetera, et cetera, right? Mm, right, wired, it amps you up. Now what happens, it increases urination, increases perspiration, yes? Coffee is also a very good medicine. It, it, it can increase, uh, you know, it can be a purgative. I mean, you can take coffee. I've often given coffee for pe to people with diarrhea. And it's a great, if you have nothing else handy, it's a great remedy. Because it just pushes everything out and that's it. I've seen it work many, many, many times. Strong coffee, okay? But all that happens, yes? Elimination, right? Sweat, perspiration, urination, <sighs> faster, everything going faster, burning up, fuel, right? So what happens with the body if you start taking that every day as a stimulant, the body in its wisdom. And another book I have mentioned in my book list is a book called The Wisdom of the Body by uh, Walter Cannon. It's a classic. It used to be a, a, one of these, you know, must-reads in medical school. It was one of those things. But he's the one that established and, and, and he was the one that coined the term homeostasis. The word homeostasis came from him, and that is the, the, the concept of the principle of self-balancing. The body's ability to achieve balance and sustain it. In that book, he talks about how all death is really irreversible shock in a particular direction in the body. It's not really dehydration. It's not really this disease or that disease. The final thing that happens is that the body goes into a state of shock in which it finally goes out of balance in terms of the earth, air, fire, and water until it cannot sustain the necessary pieces that are needed for it to be in that place called life and to, and to contain it. So in the body's ability to to achieve and maintain homeostasis is remarkable. Like I said, when we eat, the, 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 the force of that eating, is, the intensity of that combustion is so great, our cooling systems must be able to manage that. When our, uh, one of the most serious, and he, one of the thing he, things he points out in that book is one of the most serious affronts to our well-being is not the loss of blood, but the loss of fluid and how we can have an arm cut or a leg cut, huge amount of our being, and survive when we actually have fluid loss. It doesn't take very much, percentage-wise, until we get to a point of danger. Right? Right? So, from this wisdom of the homeostasis, we start taking coffee, and the, bo the body's wisdom then says, okay, here's the stimulant coming in, more urination, so I have to, what? So much urine has been lost, so much 
The body does this all, so much urine has been lost. Feces have gone through that rapidly. Uh, you're uh, a sweat, uh, working at this kind of speed of action, this much heat's being produced. So it takes an account and it says, okay, wait a minute. If this happens every day, the body's wisdom is saying this. If this happens every day, three, four days, I'm going to just dry up. My kidneys will stop working, so I, et, cetera, et cetera, I can't do this. Okay, so we've got to, we've got to balance the budget. Okay, let's hold the feces a little bit longer. Let's slow down the lymphatic flow. Let's balance the economy so we can survive. And that balancing of the economy will be the secondary action of that drug. So coffee in its initial action is stimulant, but the body reacts with its wisdom to turn coffee and to create depression, to manage it. So the primary action of coffee is, is stimulant, the secondary action of coffee is depressant. This is true for all drugs. The depressant drugs have the ability, the body has the ability to respond to depressant drugs with stimulation. I have seen heroin addicts shoot up heroin and boom, wired like they were on cocaine. Seriously. And how many people do you know, or how many of you personally know, that if you drink strong coffee, <laughs> you're ready to fall asleep right after drinking it? Yes? So most people drink coffee, and if they drink it chronically and regularly, or tea or any stimulant, they, it, they operate, it operates as a, as a depressant in the long view, in the general view of what it does to their body, and they need the coffee to get them and move them up somewhere towards normal. But on the whole, they will be depressed. There is no shortcut to energy. You know, and then there's people say, well, I take ginseng to get a lot of, I take cayenne, you know. You know, all this, you know, natural ways of having stimulants. No, you know, you're stimulated, again, this is the same principle. Health has to do with wholeness. And everything has to play into it. There's no shortcut to it. So that's just the homeopathic principle, uh, and it's something to realize about stimulants and about anything that you, you know, you... The primary action, secondary action, okay? And it's something to recognize. I remember when I was, you know, uh, when I started this clinic in, in California, in Santa Barbara, we had our clinic, and there was a man who was an herbalist who came uh, to be part of the clinic, and... Uh, and he said, yeah, I'm so happy to be working with you. He says, mm, this is exciting. We can have really, this is going to be a great clinic. He was the herbalist and we had an MD and there was myself doing homeopathy and just whatever else I do. And, and he said, you know, and also, you know, actually I'd like to consult with you about some things. I have this, you know, I have a few problems, health problems too. And uh, he said, you know, uh, one of the things, I have this chronic yellow mucus in the back of my nose and so forth. And, and uh, he said, and I don't understand why. He said, you know, I do this and do this. And one of the things he did is he took huge amounts of cayenne daily, but he also took, uh, uh, um, I'm sorry, I've forgotten the name of it, the yellow. <laughs> no, golden seal. Who said that? He just taking golden seal capsules like by the dozens all day, every day. And I said, you know, like, you know, if you take golden seal, according to that, according to the homeopaths, if you keep taking golden seal, yeah, it's going to do that. Or another example was someone who was into natural medicine that came to me and said, uh, you know, I want some counsel on my health, and, uh, but, you know, I should be in good health. I take, you know, every morning I drink uh, ginger tea, and I take so many capsules of, of, uh, of uh, cayenne. And it was some huge amount of cayenne with this idea that cayenne is like really going to make him strong and healthy, probably because it was hot, you know. And I said, oh my God, you take that. And his wife said, yeah, I do too. And I said, I was amazed how much cayenne they were taking. Now in the homeopathic provings and the homeopathic picture of cayenne, not only can it cause certain physiological things, but emotionally it can cause homesickness. And I said to them, I said, I said, oh, you guys aren't terribly homesick or anything, are you, by any chance? I said it kind of jokingly. And they both stopped and they looked at each other and said, how did you know? <laughs> so 
Home, I suggest to anybody who, who, who's involved in herbal medicine that they take a look into the principles of homeopathy to give an extra spin and an understanding on the use of herbs, medications in general, and healing principles in general. 